Hello, uh, so we're back here this time. We have a proper nice laptop to repair. When I'm saying proper nice is because it's a classic HP laptop. So no matter what, we should be able to fix it. Now this job is coming from a computer business and all what we know about the laptop, laptop will not turn on. That's all what we know. I will say let's plug a charger and let's see what he's doing. We have a blue pin um, charger. We need a blue pin adapter, which is here. Plug in the charger, and it's taking power, so it's not a charging port. You can see it's 70 milliamps, 150. Do you think actually it's charging? We have the charging light there. Hmm, it's taking 1.4 amps, that means it's charging. Pressing the power button, and the current is going to zero. Why? Let me raise the current here. Pressing the power button, and nothing happened. We do have the power uh, on here, pressing the power button, and nothing happened. Check that, nothing. I'm pressing the power, nothing happened. It's not coming on, it's not doing anything. Only once we see the current going to zero, if you remember. Uh, I will say, let's open the laptop and let's have a look inside. Maybe we can help them. Can we save this laptop? That's the question. No one opened the laptop before, it was, has a foil over the screws, you can see the foil, yeah. And the laptop, it's open. Wow, looking nice, but having in mind, uh, it was never open. Let's reset the BIOS, okay? Uh, we are resetting the BIOS by disconnecting the main battery. So the battery is disconnected, we are waiting like a few seconds. Maybe it's a capacitor there, huh, which is holding the, um, the power. Plugging back the battery. Plug in the charger. Good. Let's press the power button. Pressing the power button and nothing happened. Uh, here we have two LEDs, so we should get... Check here, I press the power button, the current goes to zero. Pressing the power button, 1.5 amps. Strange, this is a strange, uh, strange fault. I don't think I've seen this fault before. Anyway, what we are checking. I mean, it's not much what you can check in a case like this. The main power L is present, has to be present, and it is 18.6, check on the screen. Strange, 18.6. Why 18.6? So the battery is 11.3. Always you have to ask yourself when you have weird stuff like 18.6. Why 18.6? I have 19.2 on the power supply. Why 18.6? Why the HP pick up 18.6? How they achieve 18.6 voltage? Because you need some power supply from 19.3 to go down to like 18.6. So um, I want answer to these questions. Huh? So the charging port is here. We are looking for uh, the input circuit, the first MOSFET, the second MOSFET. Hmm? We, I think we have to take the board out, yeah. I'm not happy with 18.6, yeah? I have to know why it's 18.6. So just give me like, uh, give me a few minutes. And the motherboard is out. Yeah, we have the, the charging cable left there. And it's pretty clean. I can't see any liquid damage or anything else. What I can see, 
you have the charging port track you can clearly see it's a big track so this is the input you have the first mosfet the second mosfet the current sensor then you have the main power rail so let me plug a charger so plug in the charger and of course it's not taking power because it's not charging but let's check the voltage yeah so the input voltage before the first MOSFET is 19.3, like on the power supply. The output of the first MOSFET is 19.3. The output of the second MOSFET is 19.3. So how my main power rail is 18.6? Hmm? Doesn't make any sense. No. The only difference, yeah, the only difference is... We had a charging battery when we test the voltage, yeah? So I'm going to plug the battery back. The battery is plugged. Plug in the charger. Let's see, start charging. It should take like 1.5 amps from, from what we've seen. And it's taking 1.5 amps, yeah? So the battery is charging. What did you say? You don't think actually the battery is charging? We can check that. So here you have 11.3 and the voltage is going up. So clearly this battery is taking current right now. So the voltage, again, at the input of the first MOSFET is 18.6. Wait, what? Do you think my, my cable, which is coming from the power supply, is that poor? I'm losing like nearly one volt on the cable. Okay. 18.6, 18.6. Yeah. Okay, we took the motherboard out for nothing. Can't believe. I really thought it's a, it's a secret, but it's no secret. My cable, my power supply cable sucks. Yeah. Okay. Uh, power button, on the power button we have, we should have 3.3. Do we have 3.3? Power button, I can't see 3.3 on my power button. No, why, why don't have the... We have 2.2. How we can have on the power button 2.2? Let's go and check, yeah? So that's the power button, and we have a track here, 2.2, ha, and here is ground. So 2.2, pressing the power button, going to zero, and the current is going to zero. Check on the power supply, you can see. Now we have 2.3. Again, why 2.3? I need to know why 2.3. <coughs> why no 3.3? Why 2.3? Huh? That's my question. So this track is going straight to the EC chip, which is the startup chip. And uh, the voltage, the 2.3 voltage, comes from a pull-up resistor. But the pull-up resistor is connected to 3.3. Uh, is the cheap power rail. So why we have 2.3? The only way to have lower voltage when you have a pull-up resistor is if you have a divider. Yeah, so if you have a divider, it is possible the voltage to be lower. But this doesn't make sense. What is interesting, and I never seen this design before, check here. So the track from the power button is going to this transistor. Not sure why. So here we have 2.3. Here we have 0. And here we have 3.1. Huh? Wait, so one pin is connected here. One pin is connected to ground. I'm assuming this is ground. It's not ground. This one. Let's check. So on the beeping mode, yeah, this is ground, 5.6 ohms. 
So why they complicate the design? Huh? Why? That's my question. So if I'm holding the probe here, pressing the power button, and nothing happened. Okay. Here, pressing the power button, nothing happened. So what is this component? Here, pressing the power button, going to zero. Well, this component itself is not a concern if it's a transistor. If it's a semiconductor, let's say like that, and the semiconductor is good. But I cannot ask myself what will happen if we are actually having 3.3 .3 on the power button. Huh? You are not curious? So what I'm going to do, I'm going to disconnect the power supply, the charger. Yeah. I'm hoping we have power onto the battery. So I will come with the power supply with 3.3. .3. Yeah. That's the thing, 3.3. .3. Good. Okay. And I'm going to press the power button. And now it's taking current. Check there. And it's going to zero. I'm curious if the board is coming on. I can't feel the board to come on. Wait, what happened with Easy Pizza? No Easy Pizza? I mean, check this Easy Chip. So you see this uh, blurry thing? So this is actually silicon over the Easy Chip pins. Interesting, I never seen uh, this kind of design. Okay, let's check the quills. Yeah, so checking the quills, it is ground. This one is good. This one is zero ohms. Why didn't you check the quills from the first time? This one is good. This one is good. This one is good. But this one has zero ohms. Why I didn't check from the beginning, huh? Let's see. So we have ground. We are lowering the voltage to one volt. And we are coming with the power supply here. And it's taking two amps. Let me bring the thermal camera. So we have the thermal camera. So coming with current here. And what is getting hot, what is that? Wait a second. What is that? Huh? Just say it. Just say it. This one? This one is a capacitor. Yeah. A doji capacitor? Huh? A doji capacitor? Yeah, this capacitor is gone. Uh, yeah, proper short. Yeah. Okay. Let's remove the capacitor. And the capacitor is out. What did it say? Replacing the capacitor. So check here, yeah? You have one here. This is ground. You have one here. Then you have one here, one here, one here, and one here. So many capacitors. So many. So it's no rush. We're going to replace the capacitor on our next video. Yeah. So what about now? Now the board it will work. What do you think? Let me put the board back. I think that's what I think. The lessons to learn from this video is how easily you can get distracted by something else. Yeah. So always keep on your, uh, you know, your uh, routine, you know, the way you diagnose a board, like the way I diagnose a board. You remember checking the main power, then checking the coils. But no, I went on a different direction this time. Yeah, very easy to get distracted, very easily. So the board is kind of back. Let's plug the charger. Now we don't need a battery. So plug in the charger and it's taking two amps. Oh, sorry. Wait, I have a short here. 19 volts. Good. Plug in the charger. 
No, I'm not gonna plug the battery. Kind of pointless. Pressing the power button. Where is the power? Pressing the power button. Pressing the pressing the. Wait one second. Pressing the power button. Coming on 700, 800 milliamps, and we have the light here, and everything is fine. Okay. Great. Let me plug the screen. I forgot the screen. The screen is plugged. Let's try one more time. So pressing the power button and the laptop is coming on, 700 milliamps, we have the LED here, we are waiting for the picture, remember we are resetting the BIOS every time we are taking the battery out, it's getting reset, this board doesn't have a BIOS battery and we have picture, huh? yeah you see, so basically this job was like Five minutes, not not five minutes, no, no. It was like two minutes job if I will follow my own rules. The rules we are following on each video. Yeah. So what is strange is the voltage on the power button. I'm gonna check it one more time, yeah. Let me check it one more time. So plug in the charger, let's check the voltage. So on the power button, we have, exactly on this transistor, we have 2.2. I don't know how it's working. I swear I don't know. 2.2. Never seen 2.2 on a power button. Pressing the power button, and yeah, you can see the light here. It's coming on. Yeah, every laptop is different, uh, and... Uh, every design is different. So you see on this case, actually 2.2. It's fine. I found laptops were actually over two, even two, even two point six. I remember I had job and the board was not coming only two point six volts there. Why? Because the one logic level is three point three and zero is zero, but one has a range. It's not like three point three has a range. So let's. I'm not sure what is the range, but can be like from like. 2 volts to 3.3 .3. and under 2 volts it's logical zero anyway just give me like one minute to put all back together the laptop is back in place plug in the charger let's see pressing the power button yeah I do have enough current and the laptop is coming on let's see that power supply what power supply it was so the power supply with the doji capacitor it was a uh, 5 volts one, 5.1. So yeah, the laptop is not coming on without the 5 volts. It will be charging, but it will not come on. So it's taking like 2.7 amps because it's charging. Enter. Good. We have the charging sign and everything is fine. So what do you think? Huh? You see, even myself, after so long, I can't follow my own rules. Like, okay, main power is not shorted, main power is present. Next things to do is to check the quads. I got lost. You know, I fall in a rabbit hole. Anyway, I'm, uh, I'm happy I helped the customer. I'm going to stop now. I will say thank you for watching. You know, like, subscribe if you like the video. And see you on the next one. Bye. Hey. If you find my content being helpful, don't forget you can support this channel by pressing the join button and you can get instantly access to our members only cool collection and uh, Discord private channels for support with your repairs. Also, you can have a look on our uh, United Kingdom uh, eBay where you can find some cool and unique products, United States eBay store or our Patreon page. Thank you.